this will be a new video series where I do RV troubleshooting and I'll just set up a scenario of well here's what the symptoms were what was the result we sometimes go with some friends in a camping group and I've kind of become the de facto RV repairman and this time it was no different. I had a friend that had a problem with his electrical system and since we were doing the repair on his RV I didn't really want to take time to do a video on it. So I will attempt to recreate what happened. He has an 11 year old RV. His complaint was that he could not operate the landing gear or slide out unless he was connected to shore power or the tow vehicle was connected to the trailer and the vehicle's engine was running. And he also stated that he may have connected the battery up backwards. There are typically a set of fuses in most RVs, in either the fuse panel or on the combiner battery charger itself, that are reverse polarity protection. In this RV there are four such fuses, two for positive and two for negative. So I checked them all with a voltmeter. I also checked the input terminal to the fuse block from the battery and a couple of branch fuses. They all read 13.2 volts. This means that the combiner is working because anything above 12.6 volts means the battery charger is operating. And the reverse polarity fuses were not blown, so I kind of questioned whether or not he actually hooked the battery up backwards. He wasn't quite sure one way or the other. However, the reverse polarity fuses are not 100% infallible, so you could potentially reverse hook up a battery and not blow the fuses. Next, I checked the battery voltage. It read 10.5 volts, which basically means a dead battery. Now we're getting somewhere. Recall that the voltage on the battery lead at the fuse panel was 13.2 volts, which was the same as the combiner output voltage, yet the battery itself is at 10.5 volts. This tells me that there is some component in the path between the fuse panel and battery that is bad, or there is a faulty connection that is dropping the voltage. Looking at the primary battery lead, I found a 30 amp automotive style circuit breaker mounted on the wall behind the battery. The NC RVIA LV standard in section 3-5 requires that the overcurrent device shall be installed in an accessible location within 18 inches to the point of the power source connects to the vehicle circuits, in this case the battery. And luckily that was the situation we had here. When measuring on the battery side of the circuit breaker, I again measured 10.5 volts. But, when measuring on the adjacent terminal, I found 13.2 volts. I think the breaker is bad. After disconnecting the battery and turning off the combiner, I removed the circuit breaker and, guess what? The terminal lug on the lead going to the fuse panel simply fell off the wire. And after doing an ohm check on the breaker, I verified it to be bad. So, I had both problems. Not only a bad circuit breaker, but also a loose wire. This is a fairly common circuit breaker. It is a 30 amp type 1 automotive style circuit breaker. Type 1 means that it's auto resetting, so as soon as you remove the fault, the circuit breaker will reset. I found one at the local auto parts store in the town we were in for 7 bucks, and we're soon back in business. And since I have several of these breakers in my RV, I purchased a couple of spares just in case. In closing, this was a real situation, so I thought I would share with you the steps I went through to troubleshoot, diagnose, and repair the problem. I didn't have live video, but we were looking at getting the guy back in operation rather than publishing YouTube videos. 